Hello, it's Dr. Moby Motion. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to dive straight into randomizing materials in Blender. And I'm going to show you how to do this for objects or for particles. Skip around to the right section using the chapter below. So I've opened up Blender and you can see what I'm pressing and clicking on the bottom left. I have a really basic scene with some dominoes and another scene which we'll get to later with particles. And if you support me on Patreon, you can download this scene for just $3. But if we look at this now, let's render it using cycles to see what it looks like. I'm gonna press Control B so we don't waste any render power. I'm gonna save my scene in case it crashes. Um, and what I'm gonna show you applies to Eevee as well, but I just like cycles. So we're gonna change the viewport to rendered. So if we use rendering in the viewport, we can see that it looks really boring. All the dominoes have the same material. So let's go into wireframe, which lets us select all of these without selecting the ground plane. And I can assign materials to all of them at once using the material utils. This is an add-on that's included in Blender. So if you don't have it, search for material utilities and check this and then you'll be able to shift Q to assign material and we're going to give all our objects the same material let's call it random material now let's head over into the shading workflow where we're going to randomize this so we're going to use a random number to change this base color and let's press shift a to add a color ramp. So this is going to plug into this. Then we're going to press Shift A, go to Input Object Info. And this is where we have this nice random attribute. So if we plug this into the color ramp, save our scene again because rendering can make Blender crash. And let's look at the scene now. And you can see they have a random color that's picked from this very boring color scale. So let's make it much more exciting and I'll show you how to do that very quickly. We're going to get a really nice uh, selection of random bright colors by switching this to HSV and switching this to clockwise. Now the magic is going to happen when we select the black material and make it a very bright, very saturated red. I'm going to make sure this is, uh, I'll make it just over zero, so 0 0.001. Yeah, okay, it looks yellow instead of red, but that's because the magic is already happening. So you can see a rainbow has appeared. And this is because when it's sampling between red and this last color, it's going around the color wheel. So we're going to make this, again, very saturated and it's working already so you can make it one or zero either one works it means it's going to go between the first color and the last color so very quickly we have this really nice fun selection of colors but i'll show you again really quickly how to make this a little bit nicer and how how to control these colors a bit better the way we're going to do that is select this red on the right and press plus twice, maybe three times. Then we're gonna select this blue and make plus. So every time we press plus, it's adding a point to the left of the selected material. So I want a nice even distribution of colors along this rainbow. So I'm gonna press plus plus again, select this and press plus. Now we've divided it into equal segments. Now that hasn't actually done anything so far, but it will do something for us. The problem with this, I think, is that if you look at real dominoes, there's not an infinite number of random colors in between them. There's a selection of a couple of uh, nice vibrant colors. So there's some blues, some greens, some yellows. Now we're gonna change these settings again. We'll go back to RGB, but we'll change this to constant. And now we've broken down this rainbow into a couple of nice colors. And this saves you going through and manually creating a nice red, 
creating a nice orange, a green, everything. And it also allows you to tweak it a little bit. So I think there's too much yellow and green here. So I'm gonna move this. And you can see that as you change it, like these are yellow at the moment, but if I take it to the right, they become red and so does this one over there. Uh, I think there's maybe too much red as well actually, so I want less red. but also less yellow, so I'll make the yellow smaller. And then there's not enough greens, so let's make the green bigger. Ooh, this doesn't look green enough. Let's uh, tweak this, make it a bit more green, because we don't really have a nice green. And you can tweak these to get the mix of colors that you want. So if I drag this right or left, I get more green or more of that yellowy green. I actually don't like this material at all, but it's very easy. I just remove it like that. And now I can choose a nice balance between green and yellow. What about these cyans? I think they're fine as they are. Uh, maybe I want a bit more because maybe there's too many greens now. And you can go through and you can tweak this until you're happy with the mix of colors. But I think that's a really nice way to very quickly get started with a random distribution of colors. Now let's see how to apply a similar technique to particles. I'm gonna hop over to my simple little particle scene here. I'm gonna select this other camera, press Control zero to make it an active camera. I'll save and I'm checking I'm on frame one, which I am, and I'm pressing play you can see this very simple particle animation plays. We'll go back a couple of frames. So we have some nice big balls in the foreground and small balls in the background. So we have some like visual interestingness. Just to show you some basics about how this particle system is set up. It is using an icosphere as the instance object. That's gonna be important. I'm also using size deflection, so it bounces off this ground plane. But this isn't a particle simulation tutorial. If you'd like one of those, check out my molecular simulation plugin tutorials. So this frame is nice. And to apply a random material, we're going to want to select the icosphere. So icosphere, this is the object that the particle system is rendering as here. That makes sense. So select the icosphere, again make a new material, and let's see what this looks like. So save before rendering, and then ZR to go into rendered mode. You can see they're all really boring white materials. But let's set up a color ramp like we did before. So shift A, search, color ramp, HSV clockwise, and we'll make this black one a nice red that's just not zero, just over zero. And this white will saturate it. We can keep it at zero or one makes a bit more sense to me. And we're going to plug this in and there's no input. So it's making everything blue, but this is where the randomness comes in. So shift A to add an input. And instead of object info, we're going to do particle info. And this also has this random variable. So we plug this in and again, we get nice random colors. Saving my scene. A few things you could do to finish this off is make your particles smooth so you can't see the faces. So if you wanted to improve these colors, you can rewind to the object part of this tutorial where I show you how to divide up this rainbow and tweak the materials so you have some more control but this is the basics of how to set it up. So thank you very much for watching. If you want this really basic scene so you can get started, you can download it on Patreon for just $3. But I'm sure if you're watching this tutorial, you already have an idea of what project you wanna use this in. So I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know what you think of this new kind of tutorial where it's not a project start to finish. Like I'm not showing you how to set up the particles, 
and do the physics and do all these things. I'm focusing on just one thing, which is the random colors. Yeah, hope you liked it. Hit like if you liked it and subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.